مطلع ديسمبر العام 2020 ذهب النائب السابق في هونغ كونغ تاد هوي إلى المنفى الاختياري بحجة كاذبة لحضور مؤتمر في الدنمارك لم تكن الرحلة مريحة إطلاقا بل كانت محفوفة بالمخاطر والخوف ليس فقط على نفسه وإنما على عائلته أيضا غادر هوي هونغ كونغ إلى المنفى منذ عام لكن قلبه ما زال يخفق لها كما يحب أن يراها هونغ كونغ حرة لو لم يكن تاد في المنفى اليوم لكان حتما في المعتقل حيث كان ليبقى لفترة طويلة أو ربما مدى الحياة ففي هونغ كونغ تضيق مساحة الحرية وتقبض الصين على أنفاس المعارضين لجعل المعارضة صامتة يواجه هوي أكثر من 12 تهمة في هونغ كونغ بشأن احتجاجات العام 2019 وانتهاك شروط الكفالة ومؤخرا أصدرت محكمة في هونغ كونغ مذكرات توقيف بحق اثنين من الديمقراطيين الموجودين في المنفى أحدهما تاد هوي بدعوى دعوتهما إلى مقاطعة الانتخابات التشريعية الأخيرة تاد هوي معنا اليوم في أخبار الآن لنستعيد معه بعض تفاصيل رحلته الأخيرة من هونغ كونغ إلى المنفى النائب السابق في هونغ كونغ تاد هوي بداية أهلا بك في أخبار الآن كيف لك أن تصف لنا في البداية ذلك النهار أي الرحلة التي مشيت بها في قرار شخصي uh, I still remember very clearly uh, being on the plane and on the plane I, I was already texting uh, Thomas and, and Andrew and we were arranging and all the meetings and that I will be attending with different people. And then um, when I arrived at the airport, I walked out um, from the immigration area and to the pickup area. And I saw Thomas and Anders. Uh, I, I was so relieved. And at that time, the airport was so empty just of COVID. So I, I felt very lucky to be able to uh, to enter the country, and then I, uh, we we hugged each other uh, with Thomas and and Anders, and I I said to them that finally it's a, a breath of freedom. I still remember I still remember I said that, and yeah, and they were also relieved that I arrived safely, and they were so worried that I will be arrested on the way to the airport or refused. Uh, uh, of my right to exit from Hong Kong. So at that time, we were so relieved. And, and after we came back to the hotel and we were planning uh, days ahead, and they asked me about my family, and I, I told them my family is only leaving uh, uh, on the next day. So it will take some time before I get the news from my family that they're also safe to exit. So uh, I remember, of course, uh, being very busy, interviewed by different media journalists while uh, waiting for the news. And I, I checked my phone like um, every five minutes to see if they have anything to say, to see if the police uh, were watching them. And because back in Hong Kong, we were we had that experience of being watched by the by undercover police and also journalists, they are always around. And I, I used, to used to tell uh, people like that. When I was driving in Hong Kong, I looked at the rear mirror more than I looked at the front because they are always behind me, behind us. But yeah, so I, I checked phone and kept uh, update, updating from uh, my family and they said they are fine. ثمة لحظة سجلتها وسائل الإعلام الدنماركية وهي لحظة يعني اتخاذ القرار بالإعلان عن أنك ستغادر هونغ كونغ نهائيا حدثنا عن هذه اللحظة ما هي كانت مشاعرك في هذا النهار؟ Yeah, I, uh, I, I only a few days in, in Denmark and uh, during those time I, of course I were determined that uh, I will be in living in exile. I I will be leaving Hong Kong perhaps for good. So I've written a statement, on, an emotional one actually, and I typed it into my computer and I I 
my plan was to release it and on on a certain moment uh, before I left Denmark to the UK. And so also it, it's an important moment. So it has to be in line with the moment I inform also the local Danish media and also overseas media about it. So, and I remember um, Anders typed me in the English versions of what I was going to say. So we were like uh, setting up a time and we pressed the button together uh, right in my hotel room to announce that I'm going to into exile. I was quite calm uh, at that time before pressing the button. And I remember the comments from Thomas and Anders. They told me that, oh, you're, you're calmer than, than they expected because I still have um, at the time and and I still did my preparations in meeting the local media. But then right after we both pressed the button together and the, the news was out. And then I think all the emotions came in at that time, realizing that, oh, it's not part of my work now. It's more than my political work. It's more than just just a show to the people. It's it's real now. I can't go home. And it's real now. I'm by pressing the button, I'm cutting all the ties with my uh, the place I grew up with, all my relatives, my friends, and all the things that I'm familiar with in Hong Kong. It's it will be gone. It will be uh, removed from my life. So I felt uh, only at that time I felt it's so heavy, and I, I told them, I told Thomas and Anders, it's it's heavier than I expected. I didn't expect I would cry at all and I was so busy to be emotional uh, on, the, on the few days in, in Denmark but that is the that is like the last day in Denmark and and all the works all the media interviews were were done and I had the time to feel the emotions that it's so so deep and and dark and and heavy that's why I burst into into tears في لحظة ما وفق ما تحدثنا قبل إجراء هذه المقابلة قلت في أنك ربما شعرت بأنك أصبحت عبئا على العائلة التي كانت تعمل على إقناعك مرارا وتكرارا بوجوب مغادرة هونغ كونغ باتجاه بلد آخر وكنت ترفض متى اتخذت اتخذت قرار المغادرة فعلا؟ um, it's interesting even back uh, before 2019 before the freedom movement and and that was during the time I got in, I first got elected into the Hong Kong parliament. And my family had been pessimistic about Hong Kong's future and it's not going any brighter. So they, they have been quite encouraging for me to, to leave Hong Kong. They, they foresee, uh, they foresee that, uh, that I didn't buy that during that time. They persuaded me quite many times, quite hardly, uh, about making an, an exile plan, exit plan. Um, and at a dangerous moment, then we have we have the choice to leave. I, I refused uh, bluntly. And I said, um, uh, now I have an elected position and I have a lot of work to do for Hong Kong and to, and to use all my influence in the old democracy movement and how would I just leave? And I, at that time, at least, I didn't see any any real chance of uh, being locked up for, for a long time. Uh, I, I, ha I, I had some, a lot of confrontations and physical protests uh, inside and outside parliament. They used to charge me with uh, criminal uh, offenses, but they, they were not serious ones. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be locked up like for a decade or a life in prison and maybe if it's just a few weeks. I told them if I have to go to prison for, for months and I, I'll accept that. Yeah, and I, I expect I expected that it would be the case. But then um it's entering 2019 and seeing um the anti at uh, the extradition bill for uh introduced by the government. And seeing all the police brutality in in the crackdown of the Hong Kong protest, um, I felt I need to prepare. 
uh, if one day situation uh, gets really worse, then maybe I would, at that time, I thought I would consider it more seriously. But of course, I had, didn't make up my mind. But it's only after 2020, after the introduction of the national security law, I, even at that time, I didn't uh, have any determination to leave Hong Kong. But right after that, I, I saw that the tactic of the regime changed. Uh, I mean, the tactic of it towards all dissidents and opposition, it, it started um, locking people up. A lot of bad news uh, coming in. And uh, the, the few months before I left, uh, Hong, I, I left Hong Kong for Denmark, I was, um, I, I had three police morning raid and arrest uh, for the three consecutive months for different ridiculous charges. So it, it triggered my, uh, I, I realized at that time, uh, the tactic changed by the regime. Now it's not tolerating any dissent at all. And now it, it's locking everyone up in order to have a, a silent opposition. That's why I were more determined uh, in my preparation to, to see at, um, whether I should leave. That's the, that's the moment, a few months before I left Hong Kong, I had uh, a serious talk with Andrew and Thomas and all, and all the Danish friends that helped me. Ted, the question is, why did the President of Hong Kong in Hong Kong say that the President of Hong Kong أن يعرف ماذا يجري في هونغ كونغ لماذا على العالم بأكمله عليه أن يهتم بما يجري هناك. I made that bargain after I left Hong Kong, and as I did my lobbying and my advocacy work for Hong Kong's freedom and democracy, I I asked myself how I should persuade the world, the international community, that Hong Kong is so important. I tried to think and rethink and how I should keep telling the international community the importance of what's been happening in Hong Kong. But then um, my answer is that Hong Kong is the um, battlefront, is the, at the forefront of China, China's battle uh, with the, the West about freedom and democracy. So if we lose Hong Kong, if we, allow China's influence over Hong Kong to expand, and that's authoritarianism uh, to prevail in Hong Kong. If we allow China to, to take away all the promises it's made to Hong Kongers, it's made to the international community, uh, uh, the promises made in, in an international treaty and the Sino-British Declaration, that's still enforced, that's still registered under the UN, so it has all the responsibilities to give Hong Kong freedom. If it can provide, deliver that promise, that freedom to Hong Kong, then we see that it will start to threaten other democracies in the same way that, that it threatens Hong Kong and Taiwan. So I, I think the world gets that. And that's why uh, what's Hong Kong today will be, for example, what's like, Taiwan tomorrow, and what's Taiwan tomorrow will be other uh, smaller countries and fragile countries in the world. Um, we 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 don't we don't want to see China going towards that direction and to destroy all all democracy and freedom and civilization, and and that's the important about what what's happening in Hong Kong. هل تعتقد أنه ربما على الاتحاد الأوروبي أن يتخذ خطوة ما لناحية ربما مقاطعة الألعاب الأولمبية؟ هل تعتقد أن على الاتحاد الأوروبي أن يزيد من الضغط على الصين؟ I, of course I believe so, especially when France announced that oh, they, they wouldn't follow the five eyes and it wouldn't uh, be boycotting. It's quite disappointing to many of us and because for for a country like uh, France or, or Germany, it's it's a more it's a larger economy uh, in in the EU and it's more influential. It has a lot of stake in the EU, and uh, of of course I I believe that they are more responsible in taking the lead 
among the EU regarding China policies. And so uh, EU it's, uh, as a whole is a very strong bargaining power in the world. And it's, uh, it's one of the largest trading partners of, uh, of China. What, what it says means a lot to, to China. If, for example, the CAI deal, when whether it will be uh, agreed that whether it will be it will be pressed ahead, it's it's uh, it, it hurts China more than any of its declarations ever made to human rights and to Hong Kong issue. That's why uh, we Hong Kongers and all those who are suppressed by China and all the Tibetans, all the Uyghurs are looking looking up at the EU. So, so we, do, uh, we do like to see concrete actions made by EU, united actions uh, that align with uh, what's been doing by, by the Five Eyes, the US and other free countries in the West. It's very, very important. If EU can make a united stance and with the boycott of the Winter Olympics, um, I, I believe that then that the whole camp of free country is on board. Now it's only like half of it, half of it is on board. And we we wonder or oh, where, where's the biggest part in the EU? Why is still uh, delaying and hesitating? It it's it can be confusing when uh, at the, when some other time the EU has had strong sanctions and strong statements regarding Hong Kong and Uyghur. Uh, at this time in Winter Olympic, but why it's not like very consistent with the past? It can be a confusing message. كلنا يعرف ماذا يجري مؤخرا بين تايوان والصين والصين تحاول أن تمارس تأثيرا أكبر على تايوان. هل تعتقد كنائب سابق في هونغ كونغ أن تايوان تسير على طريق هونغ كونغ أم لا؟ um, Taiwan is different in that uh, it's really an independent sovereign. State and it has its own culture, its own political system, its own army. So it's harder for um, for, for mainland China, for, for the Chinese uh, regimes to uh, conquer, to attack, and to take over Taiwan like it took take over Hong Kong. So it's totally different. And so, but we, if the world, the three countries, they don't join hands together and stand behind Taiwan to back Taiwan, then Taiwan is in a real, real dangerous position um, be, because uh, in terms of military uh, strength and in terms of the economy, Taiwan cannot be comparable to, to China at all. Taiwan needs uh, all the supports by free countries and by all democracies, like how the, the international community supported Hong Kong. I think the logic is the same, that if we turn a blind eye to the invasion of China over Taiwan, then the next target will be other democracies and smaller countries and then the world. So Taiwan and Hong Kong, we are sharing similar fate um, on a similar boat, even we are in a much different position. So we, uh, what we have in common is that uh, we, we used to have freedom in Hong Kong, but and Taiwan still have freedom. And what's important is that we can uh, just watch that freedom fade away under Chinese oppression. And that's the, the task of many democracies and, and free countries in the world. هل تعتقد تيد هواي في يوم ما انك ستتمكن من العوده الى هونغ كونغ من دون ان يكون لهذه العوده اي تداعيات اقصد لهذه الخطوات التي قمت بها؟ uh, I think the day I can only go back to Hong Kong safely is when the CCP regime steps down. Other than that option, I don't think I can ever go back to Hong Kong without being locked up in jail for, for a very long time. والعائلة بالتالي بالطبع لن تتمكن من العودة صحيح؟ No, I think my families are also targeted by the regime. If you look at how their bank accounts are frozen, that's why even my family members are under a lot of persecution and oppression. I don't think they can safely go back. 
هل تعتقد أنه من الممكن أن تعود الديمقراطية وهذه المبادئ اليوم إلى هونغ كونغ مجددا؟ ما رأيك؟ Um, I'm not very pessimistic, and but uh, to be realistic, I think in near future it's it's not going to happen that freedom will come back to Hong Kong, and at least not in three five years or not in this decade perhaps. But you never know. Uh, one day, uh, political incidents or political atmosphere uh, in the world will change, and uh, when the economy of China won't. Uh, Will go up forever, and at that time maybe China will step down or not. Uh, at least it will be uh, willing to um, compromise some of its power and give some uh, some degree of power back to Hong Kong, uh, or perhaps to less hostile to Taiwan when it's weaker. So we don't know when it would it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. I don't think any Tyranny, any authoritarian government will last forever. But our, our, our Hong Kong's uh, spirit for freedom and Taiwan's spirit for freedom, they last forever. لقد قمت مؤخرا بنشر يعني ما تدعو فيه إلى مقاطعة الانتخابات التشريعية الأخيرة التي جرت في هونغ كونغ ولاحقا رأينا أنك كتبت بأن الصين طلبت حذف هذا المنشور نحن يعني قمنا بالبحث عن ذلك لم نجده هل فعلا تم حذف هذا المنشور أم أنه أم أننا نحن لم نتمكن من الوصول إليه؟ Yeah, I I posted it and Uh, only the, the second day after I posted it, the Hong Kong regime said that it, of course it's illegal, it, illegal, and then it said it would delete it. It would request Facebook to delete the post. But uh, today it's still here. I suspect that because I made uh, that uh, content outside of Hong Kong, so it's governed by Australian law under the Facebook Australian office. So of course it wouldn't. Uh, listen to the request of Hong Kong. That's why it's still here. But it's still here. So, Ali Al Akhir, how do you rate these elections that have taken place in Hong Kong recently? And do you think that the people in Hong Kong will be able to get the results of these elections or the world in the future? It depends. Uh, in the past, of course, even if it's an undemocratic society, in the past, of course, even if it's an undemocratic society, only a half democratic uh, elections in the past before the change of the electoral systems. The figures are, uh, were real at that time, and at least we are convinced. But uh, this time, and especially after 2019 freedom movement, the regime has totally evolved and changed. And we can see that there are quite many uh, very obvious lies made by the regimes in over different areas of public policies. So I'm, I'm not sure myself whether the figure uh, in the elections will be provided or if, if provided, if they will be genuine, uh, especially on the number of uh, voters that can uh, contribute to the voting rate and of, also the number of blank votes protest votes and informal votes, if they are not disclosed or they are disclosed but in a distorted way or they are made up totally, then uh, we, ha we, have, we don't have any better access to know the truth. And especially I, I draw your attention to um, the three border polling station that's completely new in Hong Kong. And because the regime is saying that there are quite many Hong Kongers living in mainland China, So the, uh, it sees the need to establish three polling stations at the border between Hong Kong and mainland China. And the, po the polling station is right at the border so that Hong Kong uh, living in mainland China can go to the border, go, go to that three uh, uh, designated polling stations to cast a vote. But what's special about those three polling stations is that they are not subject to any scrutiny by the media or by the public. So in, other, in all other polling stations in Hong Kong, um, uh, members of the public can, can uh, enter and, and actually watch the polling process and the media can enter as well. But especially for the three, uh, it's banned 
no media is allowed, no members of public allowed. So I suspect that uh, the regime is leaving itself some room to um, make up some election fraud uh, from those three stations. النائب السابق تاد هوي حدثنا مباشرة من أستراليا شكرا جزيلا لك على هذه المقابلة